What's going on, Alex Bros? It's Mr. C here, and we get to answer that famous question, when will I ever use this stuff uh, in this video? Um, in this video, we're going to be uh, using some of our results um, regarding rational functions in order to uh, answer some questions related to this rational function, um, which is meant to model the uh, level of concentration in the patient's blood screen uh, T minutes after injection. Uh, if you look at the function here, it's c of t equals 50t over t squared plus 25, and that is definitely a classic looking rational function. And in part a, what we want to do is use that function to find the horizontal asymptote. Um, and then we'll interpret it, you know, what happens to the concentration of the drug as t increases. All right, well, um, as we've been doing all along to find the horizontal asymptote of a rational function, we have to compare the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator uh, with each other. So to this end, the degree of the numerator is equal to 1, that's the highest power on t, and the degree of the denominator is equal to 2, uh, that's the highest power on t in the denominator. So what this would uh, land us in is actually a case 1 situation, and case 1, uh, referring to section 5.4, says that y equals 0 is the horizontal asymptote, which of course uh, that would be the x-axis, or in this case the t-axis. Uh, but what does this really mean? Well, what this would mean is that as t increases, the concentration approaches zero. So we'll say it this way. As t increases, the concentration approaches zero. Uh, and that should probably make some sense, right? Um, if we, uh, you know, maybe take an aspirin or a Motrin, we don't expect it to stay in our bloodstream forever. You know, it metabolizes and our body gets it out of our system. Um, so that would be uh, the full answer to part A. Uh, and this actually takes us to part B now, where it says use a graphing utility to sketch the graph of C of T. Um, so it's kind of hard for me to pull up my graphing calculator in the middle of a video. It actually won't work that way. So my way around it is to just have the graph already here and just explain where this is coming from. Um, let me tell you what I did to get this graph. Uh, first of all, here's how you would want to enter the equation into the y equals menu. Uh, even though our function is using t as the independent variable, um, you know, we've been typing functions in just using x, so there's, there's no real harm in just changing the function a little bit so you can type it into your graphing calculator. So with that said, our numerator, uh, let's surround it in parentheses, uh, you type in 50x, okay, then the division key, um, and then in the denominator, use parentheses again, you'll have parentheses x squared plus 25. And um, you probably don't want to hit zoom 6 here because of this sort of setting. Um, zoom 6 takes us from negative 10 to positive 10 and one of the issues with that based on our setting here in this problem is that you know that kind of implies that there's some negative time so that, that doesn't, doesn't really make sense here so um, values of t that make sense would be from 0 uh, and, and so forth. Um, so there's kind of an implied domain going on here. Um, so how I got this graph, well not only uh, by typing this into y1, but I made some window adjustments and I'll go ahead and write those out for you right here as best as I can. Um, I set x min to 0, alright, that'd be the smallest t value, and then x max, I found that using 20 uh, was pretty good, and then x scale, uh, I went by fives, so there weren't too many tick marks here or thick axes. Um, for y min, which keep in mind the y values stand for the concentration, um, I don't think we'd be able to make sense of a negative concentration, so uh, at the very minimum, a concentration of zero. And y max, I let that be 10, and the y scale, I set equal to 1. All right, this isn't, there's no like perfect window setting. Um, I just, you know, tied in some common sense. In particular, the x min should be zero, the y min should be zero. And then just chose some particular values for x max, uh, y max, and the SCL values that uh, gave me a graph that, that I was happy with. 
Um, so that's the graph. Uh, let me go ahead and mark up some things on here. First of all, our largest x-axis or t-axis tick mark has a value of 20. Our largest y-axis uh, tick mark or concentration value um, is uh, at 10. And keep in mind that the x-axis here really stands for the t-axis uh, because that's their choice of independent variable notation. And then the y-axis stands for the concentration. All right. So that takes us to part C, uh, where they want us to determine the time at which the concentration is highest. So based on our graph, this is definitely something that makes sense and is doable, um, because looking at our graph, there appears to be some sort of absolute maximum. All right, and it's about right here. So for part C, what you want to do is use the graphing calculator to uh, figure out the location of this absolute maximum course you'd have to do second trace, choose the maximum feature, then left bound, right bound, uh, so on and so forth. You guys know the routine by now though. Um, when you do that, what you're going to find is this is at approximately 5.00 comma 5.00. All right, so let's log some of this stuff down. The absolute max Here's the location of it, 5.00 comma 5.00. So just rounding to two decimal places. Um, keep in mind from chapter three material, the X value, or in this case a T value, tells you where it's at. And the Y value tells you um, the actual value of the maximum. So uh, the Y coordinate here uh, would be the maximum level of concentration. So five units. Uh, so uh, that's our value. And we're only interested in the time at which the concentration is highest. Uh, so what we would want to take from this ordered pair here is actually the x-coordinate um, because our, x, our x's stand for t-values. Um, so under here, let's go ahead and start forming our answer. Uh, t is about 5.00, meaning that the concentration is highest at about five minutes after injection. All right. <clears throat> so um, under these conditions, uh, you know, if this were to be injected into a patient, um, then uh, after the five minute mark, the body starts working it out of the system. Um, so anyway, uh, that's how we take care of uh, this application problem. Uh, thanks again for watching. If there's anything I can help clarify, feel free to contact me. Otherwise, have a great day, folks.